In this video, I'm going to talk about handling files. Specifically, I'm going to talk about text files. You might, for example, have an application which has captured some data from the user and you want to save it somewhere. You want it to persist after the application has been closed down. There are a number of different ways you can do this. One way is to use a database. Another way is to use a text file, which I'm going to show you now. In order to write to a new external text file, my program will be outputting data. And in order to read an external text file, it'll need to input data. To do this, I'm going to need a set of special commands. And to make those commands available, I need to import a library, like this. Imports system.io. The system.io library contains lots of extra commands, some of which I'm going to need. Now, in order to write some data to a new text file, I'm going to need something called a stream writer, and I need to declare it like this. It's like declaring a variable with a data type of stream writer. I could have called that variable anything I like, as long as I obey variable naming rules, but I've called it my stream writer, which is appropriate for now. Now I'm going to initialize that variable. When I initialize this variable using the new keyword, I'm effectively creating a stream writer object. And I'm telling it what I want my text file to be called and where I want it to be saved. I followed the name and the path of the file with a comma and then the word true, which specifies that if the file already exists, I'm going to add new data to the existing file. If the file doesn't already exist, then it will be created automatically. Now, this style of coding might seem a little bit alien to you. We're actually getting into the realms of object-oriented programming. You don't need to take a deep dive into object-oriented programming to make use of these commands. For now, let's just say it's a different style of coding. Now, let me just show you. I do have a folder on my D drive called Delmi, which at the moment doesn't contain anything. There's my Delmi folder. I've called it Delmi just to remind myself to delete it later. OK, once the file has been created, I want to write some data into it. And I can do so like this. Notice I'm using the write line command. That means each piece of data which I write into the file will go onto a new line of its own, as you'll see in a moment. Alternatively, I could use the write command. You'll see the effect of the write command in just a moment. Now that I've finished writing into the text file, I need to close the file. Otherwise, if another application needs to work with it, it won't be able to because the file will already be in use. It'll be locked. MyStreamWriter.close And I'm going to add one more line of code to this program, which is strictly speaking unnecessary. But I want to see something happen when I've run the program. So let's give it a go. All done, very quick. And you can see that my Delmi folder contains a new text file. I'm going to open that up with Notepad. Let's take a look inside. You can see the effect of the right line command. Each of those names has come on a separate line. But Yabba Dabba Doo has come on a line of its own because that's where I used right instead of right line. Let's run the program again and take a look at the file. There's still only one text file there, but you can see that the new data has simply been appended to the end of the file. If you look at the first yabba dabba do, you can see it's now yabba dabba do Kevin. Right line actually writes the data and then throws a line break immediately afterwards. The first time I used the word do, 
I used right, so there's no line break in front of the second Kevin. Well, that's how I can write data into a text file, but how can I read it? I'm going to put another button on the form. And this time, I'm going to use a stream reader. As before, I could have named the variable anything I like. I'm using my stream reader for demonstration purposes. Perhaps read names would make more sense. Now I'm going to specify which file I want to read from. I'm effectively going to open the file. To read every piece of data in the file, I'm going to need a loop. Do while not my stream reader dot end of stream. In other words, keep doing what's inside the loop while I am not at the end of the stream, while I am not at the end of the file. And I'm visiting each item of data using the read line command. And what that will do is pick up a piece of data and then automatically move on to the next line ready for reading. Let's see this in action. Actually, before we do, let's not forget to close the stream reader. And you can see we're visiting each item of data, one after another, until we get to the end of the file. Rather than output each item in a separate message box, I'm going to build an output string instead. Just a regular string variable. And each time we pass through the loop, we're just going to concatenate the next item of data to the end of that output string, which I will output outside of the loop. Notice I've just placed a space between each item of data. You may remember VB New Line from an earlier video. Or alternatively, I could load that data into an array variable. Perhaps that's something you'd like to try. Thinking about it, I should really close the file as early as I can. So I'm going to move this command, mystreamreader.close, before I do the final output. If we want that file to be available for as much of the time as possible, then we should open late and close early. So there you have it, the stream reader and the stream writer. Now there is a lot more I can do with these two commands or to be more precise, with these two objects. But in the meantime, you might like to try this for yourself. If you fancy a challenge, why not write a program to take some data from an array variable and write each item into a text file, and then write another program to read it back into an array? Something else you could try is reading from one text file and copying the data into another. You have everything you need to perform that copy operation right here.